Anybody listening uh, on uh, their crystal sets at home, uh, Mr. Speaker, would believe uh, after listening to some of the members of the Labour Party that the sky was going to fall in. It was the end of the end of the world in terms of workers' rights and and all this sort of. Point of order, Ross Robertson. I would refer him to Speaker's ruling 48 bar 3, which is addressing people outside the House or radio listeners. And the member referred to transistor radios. And I would suggest, well, it was uh, crystal crystals, sets. I'm sorry, what he referred to crystal sets, which is much the same thing, Mr. No. Mr. Speaker, and he should actually be addressing the House and not those listening on crystal sets outside. He's been here a long time. He should know better. I, I apologise for uh, that. Well, now I'm going to make gross ruling here. That gro oh, gross order. misdemeanour. Order. 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 48 bar 3 says um, the blatant talking to people outside the House. And I think that is a measure of um, a certain type of behaviour, which I don't believe the member crossed, but yeah. I caution him not to cross well, it. Well, I'll take my apology back, <laughs> uh, Mr Speaker, and I'll save that apology for another, for another day. But you would have thought, sir, uh, and it's good to see Ross Robertson on the job. Oh, <laughs> it really is good to see him on the job. He's, He's like a delegate. He's like one of those delegates, sir. In one of the businesses that the Labour Party <coughs> have mentioned earlier on, sir, he's fastidious. What? He's, he's on the verge of being... No, I won't say it. No, no. He's like a little, a little rotwheeler, sir, making sure that everybody's got what the, the, the old national award says that they're entitled to. Because this is what their argument is all about. It's his prescriptors as pre prescriptive as the Country Women's Institute's uh, recipe book of 1951, Mr Speaker. And I, I must add, there's nothing wrong with that recipe book. I've used it myself on a couple of occasions, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, the old law, the old law, the old law that Sumeroni um, dined out on for a, for a number of years... Mr Speaker, was far too prescriptive, sir. The amendment that my colleague and our Minister is moving today, sir, tonight, sir, is about being flexible. It is about good faith. It is about protecting both employers' and employees' rights, sir. You know, you can't get productivity in this country going at a rate of knots where we climb out of the mess that we are in if it was left up to that side, sir. If it was left up to that side. And what are, we, what are we talking about here? All we're talking about is saying to the worker, when would you like your lunch break? When would you like your smoker break for the morning period? <coughs> oh, when, when would you like to have your smoker break in the afternoon, Mr Speaker? See, what they, what they don't realise is that workers actually can think for themselves. They can sit down with the boss without the unions and them taking a, you know, clip the ticket as they go along, pay their union fees. Now, that's what happens, because I've been there, Mr Speaker. I've been there. And some of the worst employers, might I add, sir, were actually union officers, Mr Speaker. The worst employers that, that they rail against were the likes of the Northern Hotel Workers' Union. Were, I, was, I was member of the Northern Clerical Workers' Union. A very, very fine outfit, Mr Speaker. We're a broad church. We are a broad church, sir. And this, sir. But isn't it, but isn't it great to hear the old Fabian Society ramp up the old sort of cloth cap arguments that we had in the 1970s. Well, Mr Speaker, I've got news for the Labour Party. I've got news for the Labour Party, and it's all bad. Mr Speaker, the, the, the days of those battles have gone. The winning and losing of those battles have gone. And like my learned...
learned colleagues say the wall has come down. We now live in a more peaceful society. We, we now live, sir, in a society where we can be flexible, where we can say to one another, excuse me, Mr Bossman, I'd like my 10 minutes now. Rather than being constrained by the, by the Fabian Society, who tell me that at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm to have my smoko break. And at 12.30, I'm supposed to have my lunch break. Sir, this is the 21st century. This is not the days of black ball, as my colleague from the Māori Party uh, says, sir. This is not those days. We've moved on. We are a better place. We are a more flexible place. And, sir, there's nothing wrong with workers making decisions for themselves. Yeah, yeah.